Hello, it's time to make another plane again. This one's going to be at... What? Oh, I've barely flown the last plane I made before I'm making another one again. Don't worry about that. Making them is half the fun, isn't it? Anyway, this one's going to be a super short takeoff and landing plane. At least that's my <laughs> hope for it. Uh, this is not the one I'm going to make. This is probably the one that I would have made if I wanted to go the relatively hassle-free route, but as Julian Eilert once said, I love hassle. So <laughs> I didn't go for this one, I went for this one. So a couple of reasons I'm making this plane. One is because I bought these large 6 inch, six inch wheels from Dubro last year and I never used them. So they've been sitting there looking at me every time I walk past and I have to do something with them. So this plane is going to make use of those. So just for scale, that's a 6 inch wheel there and the wingspan is going to be one8 almost 1.9 meters I think by the time it's all done. So the hassle part is going to be in this carbon fiber space frame thing that I've decided to try and do. So a lot of what, I've, what I'm doing here with this stuff is not necessarily the best way to do it so don't take this as any kind of um, tips or suggestions or anything. I just want to get more practice with using composites and you know fiberglass and carbon fiber and stuff like that. And until now, all I've done is cover things with the fiberglass, and I'm getting fairly good at that, but what I wanted to try doing is to actually build something up from carbon fiber or fiberglass, so that's what I'm going to try here. And another reason I'm making a plane like this is because I want to get some practice with takeoffs and landings uh, on landing gear, which I don't do much of. I usually hand launch. So the big red plane that I made last year was made with the purpose of doing that, but I found it to be just too intimidating, the weight of it, because it became about 10 kilos <laughs> all up, so that was just... Uh, it was just a very nerve-wracking experience, the whole thing. So this one hopefully is going to be under 3 kilos and it will be a lot easier to land at a short, uh, in a short space. And I'm also going to be making it with dedicated flaps instead of flapperons that I had on Big Red. So hopefully um, it should do nice short landings. And it's not going to be a home slice plane really because I'm not making out of lots of little slices and I'm not sort of sanding stuff off to shape it like I did with the home slice planes. Um, but you can see here there are some lines in the wings. Those are the only slices per se that we're going to be seeing. So it's not really um, not really a home slice. So I'm going to call this one a farm hopper because I'm optimistically thinking that it's going to hop around different locations on the farm. And another thing I'll be doing in this plane that's new, I don't think I'll show you all the steps that I'm doing anymore because I have plenty of videos showing how this stuff is made and we've seen it all before so I'll try and just stick to mostly showing you stuff that's different to what I've done before. Since I'm going to have dedicated flaps I've decided to try and get a little bit fancy with my hot wire cutting because I'm also getting better at that now and for the flaps section of the plane I'll cut it into... I'll cut this shape into the uh, control surface so that when it's put together we'll get something like this um, so that there'll be a, an opening here for the air to come through there. I forget what, what that's called now but um, it seems to be a good idea from what I can tell. Um, so these diagrams here show the different colors are different layers of plywood. Actually the green here and the white here are on the same level and then the yellow is stuck on the side of the white one to perform a hinge um, but we'll see how that is all done later on and since I'm I thought I'd do this fancy cutting here I thought why don't I try and get even a little bit more fancy and for the ailerons I'll cut them like this so that when they rotate they are like this when they rotate anyway let's have a look at some of the photos from what I have done I wanted to try building the landing gear from fiberglass so I printed out the shape of it like that and stuck that onto foam, cut that out. This is 5 centimeter thick foam here. Made some holes here for the tubes that I was planning to mount it onto and put uh, some tubes in there and cut away a little bit here. A little bit too much here, cut away, I didn't really need to do that so much. Um, just like that and there's a, I sanded in this shape here like that so that it would be a little bit thicker in the middle and then this piece of wood here has packing tape on it and these carbon fiber tubes also have packing tape on them to prevent the epoxy from sticking very well 
and then put sell tape or packing tape all over that foam as well. Uh, and these are the pieces of fiberglass that I use. Probably not quite enough in hindsight. Since this is a very large radius and it's easy to fit um, cloth on it and including plastic and stuff, I'm trying the Igor Nagoda technique of making it nice and smooth on the outside surface. So I just stuck a piece of the uh, vacuum bagging film on it and I'm just squeezing out all the air bubbles here. Very easy. This is probably one of the easiest fiberglassing jobs I've done actually. Hmm, so it needs to support about two and a half kilos or 1.25 kilos on each side. <clears throat> Bit hard to tell. <clears throat> Well, eventually got it. These um, tubes in here were extremely difficult to get out. I had to put the thing on the ground, grip one end of them with the vice grips, stand on it and put most of the strength of my back into it to pull them out, but uh, eventually got them out. They have sellotape coating on them by the way, um, they weren't actually glued in there. So should be able to put tubes in there in that same space now. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's perfect. Oh, yeah. So it's just the thickness of the sellotape is the clearance that they've got now. That's nice. Okay, here's the landing gear all put together now, and I'm starting to get a little bit worried that it might be a bit borderline for strength. So <laughs> when you put the wheels on there, for one thing, they wobble around like that. So right after takeoff, it's going to be going like that for a bit, which is not great. Hopefully it would just sort of settle out, but it, it just feels too soft, even, mm, I can see even just doing, you know, banks and just regular flying is going to make this wobble like that, so that's one reason. Um, surprisingly, this is actually feels alright, so I'm thinking that the plane's going to be two kilos, or probably two and a half to three altogether, but the actual weight that the, um, like, this is sort of 700 grams altogether, so if you re remove that weight, because it doesn't, the wheels don't have to support themselves, um, you're left with about almost two kilos. And I put a two kilo weight on it and wheeled it around like this just to see how much the wheels splayed out like that. If you roll it, that you can get them to widen out a bit, but more than they started, like that. Um, and it doesn't feel too bad. So I think for taxiing it might be okay, but there is also the question of when you're landing you're giving it more of a thump than just taxiing, you know. Even so, thinking it might be alright. So it's kind of surprising to me that, that this problem or the, the strength that you need to do that is less of an issue than the strength that the wheels need to just hold themselves still while it's flying. But anyway. <laughs> I think I'll use this since I did put quite a bit of time into making it. I'll try it out and if it turns out to be too weak I'll have to think about sort of reinforcing it somehow or maybe even putting a second strut coming from here a little bit more to the back or something. Um, but anyway, it's looking a little bit borderline at this point. Here are all the plywood pieces I cut. I did this on my CNC machine this time because there's so many of them and I just get a bit tired of doing it manually. My CNC machine doesn't do more than about a 20 by 20 centimeter square, which is why I haven't really done this in the past. And for this one, the wing cord is 28 centimeters. So that's why 
I'm trying something else new, which is to separate them with this kind of a zigzag pattern. They fit together quite nicely actually, and unfortunately it did necessitate the extra step of gluing them together, which I did with epoxy, and um, just put some baking paper between them. And these two pieces in the top left here are mainly just a template to make sure that the holes are all lined up so they just get clamped on the outside of this while it's gluing. The middle rib I wanted to be quite strong. This is the one that's going to be attached to the boom going back to the tail. So I put some carbon on each side of that. And these other two ribs here, these are the ones that are going to be attached to the strut or the bracing, the wing brace that comes out from the bottom of the fuselage to the, to the middle of the wing or the first rib outward of the wing. So the spar is going to go through here and right about this point here I'm going to attach a little piece of aluminium and that has a screw coming into it from the bottom. So this piece of aluminium you can, you can see it's inset slightly there like that so this um, it's going to be flush with the bottom of the wing and then it's holding this nut captive and very very captive when you put a bit of epoxy microspheres on it like this you can actually get the screw out quite easily once it's set so that leaves you with um, a nice captive nut with a flush to the bottom of the wing surface to screw in your wing brace to make spar holes in the foam for the wing pieces I decided to have another go at this drilling technique and this was a royal pain in the ass last time I tried it and I think I said I'd never do it again but it made such a great result that here I am doing it again except that this time instead of using just an aluminium tube with notches cut in the end I decided to actually try and make a hole with a drill like you normally would and my theory was that if the hole if there was actually a hole being cleared out instead of just a circle being cut and forced in there it might make it a little bit easier and this turned out to be true so what I've done is um, this is a 10 millimeter aluminium tube which is approximately 8 millimeters on the inside and then I just epoxied this 8 millimeter drill bit this is one of those crappy brand drills that I forget what the brand is but they're really rubbish so I wasn't really too worried about losing this bit and this um, turned out quite good so here's uh, the result of that it didn't really uh, line up perfectly well but I've found that if you drill the hole first and then you do the hot wire foam cutting afterwards it doesn't really matter too much. Now these pieces here I made these for cutting the um, flaps obviously in this case and it was a little bit of an adventure in foam hot wire cutting and I was thinking that I'm really good at this now so I'll give it a try and wouldn't you know it every one of these six pieces that I did worked out perfectly fine so that's the uh, the flaps there I'm looking from the bottom and looking from the top and it even had this little little tiny little notch of about a millimeter and a half that I drew in my CNC program it just turned out great and then this is the one for the ailerons this was harder but still this worked as well so here are all the foam pieces I just laid them out on the floor to get an idea of the size and for some reason the tail started to look quite a bit smaller than it did on the computer screen in the design program so I actually threw away all of these tail pieces and made another three and that's them there although <laughs> it doesn't really look like much but I made them a centimeter larger I mean a few centimeters larger all round so like that instead hopefully that should be big enough for the elevator hinges I just did these as I've been doing in the past with a little bit of Kevlar for a hinge um, and that's them being glassed there and stuck onto the tail boom with a bit of Gorilla Glue to tack it on first and then come back with epoxy and a little bit of microspheres and fill it in like that. Um, but for the rudder I wanted to try another new thing, new for me this is, and uh, that is a tape weave hinge and I'm using this 3M Blenderm tape which I'm not sure if this is the greatest thing to use but the nice thing about this is that if it sucks I can come back with some other sort of a tape maybe and try it with something else fairly easily um, and I came up with a nifty way of doing this you just fold the tape back over and stick it onto there like reverse it a little bit and that gets it all out of the way and stops it from getting stuck on the other pieces and then you can pick up the control surface itself and put it nice and tight on there and get exactly the result you're looking for and this is total weight of the tail probably as usual a little bit heavier than I wanted 
Here's the motor mount going together and the shape of this piece by the way is uh, made like this so that it smoothly comes up from the top surface of the wing just enough to fit to the top of the motor mount like that. I'm planning to make the tail boom for this plane from these carbon fiber tubes and at the front I'll connect it to this middle spine rib piece just by sticking that on there and wrapping some carbon fiber cloth around it to hold it together. And the sizes of tubes I have, they fit into each other very nicely. I have 18mm, 16mm and 14mm and that gives you a nice telescopic uh, adjustment <coughs> capability and they fit in there very well but obviously the 18 can't go to the 14, it needs to go 18, 16, 14 if you want to make it nice and tight, snug fit. So the lengths that I have are a bit, bit awkward, it'd be nice if my 16 was that long and then I could just have it go 16, 14 out to the length that I need. Uh, but I can't do that I, and I don't want to use the 18 if I can avoid it because it's a little bit heavy so what I'm going to do is only I'm not going to use the 18 at all and I'm just going to use the 16 and I'm only going to join it halfway at the back and the front I'm going to use this 16 millimeter aluminium tube with some packing tape around it so it doesn't get stuck in and when the epoxy is set I'll just pull that out so the front part's not actually going to be uh, solidly connected here I did consider maybe doing that for the whole length of this section so I could pack, put packing tape around this whole piece and wrap the cloth around it like that to stick it together and then I'd be able to pull slide this out and this piece and that piece would be telescopically adjustable as well um, but it might, I think it's just going to be a bit awkward to hold it in the right place because you need to have that sitting on there quite nice and straight and at right angles from this direction or straight from this direction rather uh, and it just seems a bit awkward and I think it would be easier if I could just glue these two together properly first and then I wouldn't have to worry about that because the other issue is that every time you make a joint like this telescopic joint you're going to have to make sure it doesn't twist so that the tail becomes off center at the end so here I've tacked the carbon fiber tube and the spine together with a little bit of epoxy and I sanded a little block of wood here so that I could get this to snugly fit inside both the carbon and the aluminium so that they'd sort of lock together in the same position and to hold it straight at the front I put a bit of wire in here and tightened that around like that um, uh, yeah oh and then I glued this in because I want this piece to be part of this as well um, I'll explain that a little bit more later and these are the sheets of carbon and a little bit of glass that I used as well. This is 45 degrees, everything else is straight. Um, this is 200 gram twill by the way and I bought two square meters of this last year and I never used it so that's another reason I wanted to try building up things from carbon fiber just so that I could finally use the stuff that I bought. Uh, it's the first time I've used twill and I've noticed that it's a real pain in the ass. It's nice and drapeable, it sort of goes around all the corners nicely but you barely need to look at it and it starts to fall apart. You've, I've cut this as carefully as I possibly could and it's even it's still sort of falling apart at the edges like that. It's a bit of a nuisance like that. Um, I filled in the little gap between the tube and the spine piece with some microspheres first. I didn't let this dry though. Um, I just did the cloth straight over it in the next, like next sort of 10 minutes afterwards so it uh, all stuck together quite nicely. And um, I can't really see much there, but it's um, this piece of dowel is in between. Oh, it's basically where the uh, the white stuff is there, so it's sort of holding the the fabric uh, close up against the middle piece. Okay, so here's that the next day. I think it's turned out pretty well, although I have to say it has become alarmingly heavy. Hopefully, some of that weight will be reduced once I take the peel ply off and remove the aluminium but still um, it's pretty heavy on the resin. So I did put peel ply over all of it and I put some uh, dowel like that one on each side with baking paper of course in there so they didn't get stuck. And that kind of pressed or pulled the carbon down like that over the main tube. And you can see it's all nice and shiny there because there was so much resin that it all got squeezed out through the peel ply. So all of that will be um, removed once I take the peel ply off. So normally it's like that if there's like just a little bit of resin remaining, kind of that dull finish, but all the way along here you can see it's all heaps and heaps of resin and up here as well uh, way too much resin on that bit. So it would have been nice if I could have done the same pressing down thing all the way up 
to here as well but you can see it's only happened in that little area there beside the main tube where the dowel had fit so that area there here and on the other side there is nice and thin it's not really that much thicker than the plywood was originally but then unfortunately it sort of bulges out again to here where it's kind of thick um, but the peel ply does a great job of making everything smooth so if I take this off here you can see underneath the peel ply there's some of the carbon, that, the new carbon that's stuck there but it's all nice and smooth so uh, if I do any work like this again I'll definitely be putting lots of peel ply all over the place to keep it nice and smooth oh come on <laughs> it's turning but it doesn't want to it doesn't want to come out that way. But I think if I just stand here for about two hours doing this, I'll eventually get it. <sighs> it's a good workout, that's for sure. Okay, well that's how that turned out. It's not very tidy and it's also quite heavy at 115 grams, obviously more than I wanted but everything's in the right place and it doesn't look too terrible considering it's the first time I've tried something like this. Um, that aluminium tube, by the way, I realized what was happening there is that I was actually fighting against the sticky of the sellotape. So all of the sellotape sticky was on there and the sellotape itself was staying inside the tube stuck by the epoxy. So it must have been quite a good uh, connection between the epoxy and the sellotape more than I thought. Um, but anyway, it turned out alright and now I have a nice smooth tube inside there. I had to um, poke around in there to get the sellotape to come out because I'm planning to put some servo cables down there and I don't want it to be all sticky on the inside. And this edge here might be a bit sharp too. I might have to sort of flatten that off or put a little bit of electrical tape around here or something to make sure that the servo cables don't get cut as they go through. But motor mount plates there and... Um, Everything's looking good. This little bit in the middle here has a slot cut into it like that. And I'm planning to do the same thing that I did with Home Slice 4 and use a couple of hose clamps here and here and then put the spar from the wing inside there and clamp it so that just to stop the spar from sliding in and out. And that's obviously not going to provide very much bending strength. So what I'll do is I'll put another carbon fiber tube, this is 8mm now, so this one's small enough to go inside the 10mm like that, and then this will provide the actual bending resistance that it will need. So because these pieces here are 12mm, I don't really want them poking inside the actual foam of the wings, so what I'm going to do is put some other foam pieces down here, uh, whatever this is, 4 centimeters or something like that, on each side and they're going to stay there permanently so it'll extend the wingspan by eight centimeters or so and I'm thinking to make this this whole platform here the main central hub of the wiring so possibly even putting the flight controller here as well because this is where all the servos are going to have to come from for the wings and for the tail and the motor ESC is probably going to be right here as well just behind the motor and the bottom part of the plane with the the wheels and the lower platforms mainly just going to be for holding the battery and for having something to stick the landing gear on. And here's the tail attached there inside the telescoping connection. And this is about the longest it could possibly be and, and still remain comfortably secure here. So there's about eight centimeters overlap between these two tubes. But that gives me, uh, I need it to be here at least this long. This is where I'm planning to put it. So it gives me leeway of about another eight or nine centimeters longer than I need. And shorter than I need is is no problem it can go you know however short you need um, so yeah it should give me plenty of room to adjust the distance between the tail and the wing